you're there, leave us a comment. We'll be cycling through some of those here on the air. All right, joining us right now, Dr. Yurate Ivanovichene, an infectious disease specialist from Hartford Healthcare St. Vincent's Medical Center. Doctor, glad to have you on this show again. Let's first talk about these big changes in terms of masks. People have been waiting a long time for this. Your reaction? Thank you for having me again. I'm actually very happy for those people who got vaccinated and finally will be able to live normal life again. And I'm slightly worried about the people who didn't get vaccinated. Um, in the last month or so, and maybe for the last couple of months, we've been seeing people in the hospital being hospitalized, not the vaccines, but the people who did not receive the vaccines. And as pandemic started, we actually seen that population in the hospitals for the age groups are changing and we see younger and younger people getting hospitalized who were not vaccinated. Doctor, I'm seeing some people post online and even just, you know, hearing from people say, listen, I didn't get vaccinated and now the mask mandate's gone in New York and Connecticut and I've kind of outlasted this whole governmental process. What do you say to that mindset? Uh, I would say be very careful. Like I mentioned before, We've seen elderly people getting hospitalized, sick and dying, and now I see very young without any underlying conditions being hospitalized, getting sick and coming to the hospitals. And I think they, most of them, they tell me, oh, I thought it was a joke. And then we really end up in the intensive care units on all of the high flows requiring really oxygen supplementation, not feeling well, they're changing their minds. So I hope, I really hope that those people who uh, didn't get vaccinated will go and get vaccinated. And then, doctor, you look at the situation in New Jersey where the governor says we're not going to we're not there yet for the CDC guidelines. We're not going to get to that point. We'll be there at some point, but just not right now. What do you make of that decision by Governor Murphy? I think every state has to make, they make their own decisions. For example, Connecticut has really great vaccination rates uh, as of May May 7th, we had 50% of our all Connecticut populations completed the whole full vaccination. And I think more than 70% uh, had at least one dose of the vaccine. So which is great and I think we can lift some of the requirements. Uh, I would still be vigilant uh, if you are an immunocompromised person or you are in some kind of immunomodulating agent that you, know, you are more susceptible, I would probably still consider wearing masks in the public. Doctor, one of the big concerns we're hearing are, is from those who are vaccinated, who are now going to go out there, and if they choose to wear a mask or not, they say, listen, we can't verify who is vaccinated and who is not. We just see a whole bunch of people without masks and businesses, too. They say, we're not really sure how to handle this. Listen here. Am I allowed to ask for proof? I mean, what am I allowed to ask for? You know, how far down the line, you know, am I supposed to go or am I not supposed to go? Um, you know, it just, it doesn't really seem like that there's a lot of physically. Doctor, what do you say to those who are, va who are vaccinated, who are concerned that unvaccinated people may abuse the new mask recommendations? I think they're taking their own risks, right? Unvaccinated population, uh, taking that mask on and, and taking a chances of getting sick. Uh, I'm really proud of the ones who got vaccinated and they're finally ready to go out and, and, and have some fun. So if you're vaccinated, because I've heard people talk about this, too, they say, listen, I'm vaccinated, but someone in my house is not. Maybe it's a child who's not yet eligible. If they come into contact with someone who's unvaccinated, uh, I could potentially spread it to my son, to my daughter, even though I am vaccinated. So uh, as we know, our recommendations, even for the vaccinated person, if you get exposed to somebody who is positive, you don't need to quarantine. You just have to observe yourself. There is always a little chance that vaccine doesn't work 100% and you can still get sick, but that chance is really low. Uh, for those people who are really concerned that they can bring uh, virus back home from going outside and um, you know without the masks, I would probably recommend to, to wear the mask in, in, in the public. All right, well, the head of the CDC is now calling yesterday a, quote, landmark day in the fight against the coronavirus. She says more than 4 million teens between the ages of 12 to 17 have now gotten their first vaccine dose. More than half of all adults have received at least one dose. Yesterday, we had a landmark day. As the president announced, more than 60% of people 18 years and older have received at least one vaccine dose. We need to continue to ensure vaccination coverage is uniform across the country. 
Yeah, that's the challenge. Now, overall, officials say more than 274 million doses have been administered across the country. But, Doctor, you did point out that different states have very different numbers. In New York, the numbers are encouraging. Connecticut, as you mentioned as well. Do you believe that we're you know, going to be able to continue to get more and more people vaccinated, or have we kind of hit a plateau? I think as the age group changes, uh, we probably will see younger people getting vaccinated more. Uh, there is a lot of good vibes from young population. They want to go back to the concerts, want to go to coffee shops, and they want to get that vaccine. So uh, there is a lot of encouraging vibes from the young, the younger population. And doctor, you know, we're seeing so many incentives now from different states, different governments trying to encourage people to get this shot. Governor Cuomo in New York talks about what he calls the youthful and the doubtful people who are just not sold on the vaccine. Do you think that the incentives may be enough? Do you think it's a worthwhile effort to try to get these folks to ultimately roll up their sleeves? I think we can try anything, right, to increase the numbers of vaccinated people or to, to end this pandemic or at least to minimize sick people and people who are entering the hospitals and dying. So I think any 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 action is really good. So then overall, in terms of public health, what do you see as the end game here? Obviously, everyone would love to eradicate. But do you think we can achieve herd immunity? And if not, what would be the goal? I think, uh, you know, it would be good if we would have at least 70 percent vaccinated. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's going to be hard to achieve. I think it will take some time to achieve. And uh, I think at the end, the ones who did not receive uh, the virus and have the natural immunity from, from the disease itself. And then with the issue of vaccine hesitancy, how do you combat that? Even you as a doctor, you may know some people in your own life who express hesitancy. What do you tell them? I tell them that it's really safe. Uh, it protects you from getting the severe disease. It protects you from going into the hospital and ending up on ventilator for eight to 10 weeks. And afterwards, when you go come back, you're not the same. You still have all those symptoms. You have the mental fog and you don't feel the same. So people are really struggling, uh, especially the ones who have ended up in the, in the intensive care units. All right, Dr. Irana Ivanovicene, good to see you as always and stay with us.